Okay, YouTube world. Today I thought I would film a little video on setting up a Glock 35 Gen 4 or Gen 3 for that matter for USPSA limited division. Uh, right here we got a Glock 35. It's in 40 caliber, which you would need for USPSA limited as you need major power factor scoring when you shoot that division your lesser hits are worth more than uh, minor calibers like your 9mm minor uh, your 40 and 45 and limited 40 is basically the the standard caliber of limited more or less these days um, so that's uh, that's why I got this and uh, I've been shooting USPSA for uh, a little over a year now, and I've had a reasonable amount of uh, success in the sport. It's uh, continually challenging, and I've had several people ask me, uh, you know, what uh, people that are starting out, what to, uh, how do I set up my gun? What what kind of trigger to use? What uh, what kind of recoil spring? What uh, you know? What to use for grip? You know, just general questions about how to set the gun up, what ammo to use. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time today and uh, kind of go into the gun a little bit. Uh, I'll be as uh, detailed as possible. Uh, that way uh, you could set your own up. Uh, the information is pretty readily available on the internet, but I can share a little bit of things that I've, a little bit of trouble I've went through and, and kind of come back to and improved upon over uh, the number of matches I've shot in limited. Okay, so we'll go into sights real quick. I use the Terran, uh, so we can get a better, there we go, better picture of the sights. I use the Terran Tactical Innovations Competition Sights for the Glock. And I want to say that uh, the sights are great. Um, they're very well made. They're, they don't just look good. They're actually pretty tough and pretty well made. The dot they have is is on the smaller side, but it makes uh, for very accurate shooting, especially at longer distance with a Glock, if you can maintain your trigger control. Uh, I've been pretty successful hitting steel plates. Uh, I still struggle with paper once in a while, but plates I'm usually pretty good at with these. I can put that dot on there and just squeeze the trigger off and and usually I'll nail it every time um, so that's that you can install these by at home with uh, I used aluminum punch or you could use a brass punch as well um, I use it you can use a regular bench vise just use a couple pieces of wood like a 2 by 4 split in half or something or uh, to uh, to to basically grab the to hold on to the slide here at the end just kind of gently clamp it in there so it doesn't leave any marks you don't want to bend anything and then you can tap out your factory Glock sight and uh, your new sight you can tap it in but sometimes you might have to uh, file down just just a hair on the the dovetail edges of the new sight you're going to put in it makes it a little easier I advise oiling or lubricating both the dovetail cut in the slide and then also oil up the the site itself and like I said you wanna uh, Dawson does a really good video on installing sites at home you might want to check it out at Dawson Precision a good company by the way but also you can uh, like I said you can do this at home and you don't have to take it to a gunsmith and usually do it at home you can do it where you want and then you'll know how to adjust it if you want to adjust point of aim or point of impact rather on your gun yourself so you don't have to take it back to a smith or anything like that um, the nice thing about running these Glocks is you can, you can kind of be your own gunsmith on them. Um, so anyways, that's that on sights. On the front sight, just about everybody makes a front sight tool. I just uh, basically use that front sight tool to screw it in, the little screw on the bottom under the slide. Use a little bit of Loctite on it. And every once in a while I'll kind of I'll over check it, make sure it's still tight. Usually it is. It takes quite a bit of matches for it to relax much.
Okay, so next up, I wanted to. People always ask about, uh, you know, what trigger do you run? What do you advise? Uh, so far, I've had good luck with the uh, OC Custom Triggers, Orange County Custom Triggers. Basically, it's got Orange County, and he will drill and tap this factory stock trigger shoe and put a set screw in there so you can adjust the pre-travel of the trigger and then he also does a little bit of polishing here and there where it breaks this, uh, the striker so it's kind of a mild polish job and then like I said it, it lets you adjust the factory preset and you can see that you can get colored get the colored safeties and you just adjust it to where it kind of allows it to travel and you, to where you, the trigger will still have full range of motion. You'll see kind of a shorter preset. Anyways, I like that. Seems to make the gun a little, to me, a little more accurate. Uh, maybe a little faster as well or a combination of both. And so it's a good product. I advise it. It's reasonably priced. I know there's some other companies out there uh, that make custom triggers for competition or just custom triggers for Glocks in general. You know, you can kind of pick what you like and what works. Uh, this worked for me and it was very reasonable. So check them out. I think he sells on eBay and is, uh, also sells at uh, OCCustomTriggers.com. So there's that. Okay, so another thing I ran into shooting limited was uh, cost factor of 40 caliber ammunition, and that leads me to the striker. Um, I was used to shooting Federal, which is relatively cheap and, and economical in production, and uh, but I couldn't afford to shoot Federal 40 because it's like 15 or 16, 17 with tax. And I can usually get the 9 for 10 a box. Um, so 40 was just out of the picture on price. So I end up sourcing uh, uh, Freedom Munitions ammunition, 40 caliber re remanufactured. I shoot the, the 165 uh, round nose flat point. Uh, it's good ammo. Uh, just every once in a while you'll run across some real hard primers with Freedom. Uh, it's, it's usually the real shiny gold primer is a real hard one. And I was having trouble with the gun setting the rounds off. I was getting light primer strikes. Um, so I searched around on the internet and I, I found a couple threads on in a couple of different people selling this IDP tactical striker. Um, it, it seems to be it's like a stainless steel, skeletonized, CNC machined uh, striker for basically uh, this your small frame Glocks. I believe they make it for the large frames, but I know they make it for the small frame, and which this is for. I, I now run this striker in this Glock, and since installing with the, you know obviously running a lighter Zev striker spring. In combination with this striker, it will set off everything I, I run through it. It doesn't matter how hard a primer I can find, the this will set it off. And I can't say enough. You know, it takes that worry at the match of like, oh, geez, am I going to have a light primer strike? Uh, you know, it's going to kill my hit factor. I'm going to have to. It's just, it's just what a pain, right? Nobody wants to do that. And I've seen guys. I know guys who reload for their Glocks and they don't so once in a while they'll have they don't get their primer set correctly and it seems like this will help set off the primer no matter what as long as the primer is set reasonably well and it, like I said it's cleaned up a lot of our local light primer issues with this Glock guys there's uh, another guy who's running one now as well he used to get light strikes all the time with nine millimeter and now this has basically cured his problem and he does pretty well um, and so like I said we're both it's nice to go to a match and not worry about setting uh, setting your primers off uh, like I said IDP tactical is the maker it's a good piece of quality uh, machined part uh, you know I'm familiar with a lot of machined parts 
in manufacturing. And like I said, this is a quality product. I wouldn't recommend it if it was not. And it's reasonably priced. You know, it's not the big, you'd be surprised what you get for it. It's, you know, around 50, 60 bucks. You can't beat it. It's good quality. Put it in your gun and you will not be sorry in my opinion. Okay, so that brings us to the leading of barrels. Um, when I shot production, I shot mainly Federal 9mm, which is a full metal jacket round, which for the newer shooters out there, basically is it has a layered piece of copper around the lead projectile. It, the advantage of that is, for one, it, it keeps the bullet in one piece, but it also keeps the barrel clean. You don't have, you're not susceptible to leading. If there is any lead that gets in the barrel from the back of the bullet, the the next jacket is going to kind of rip it right out of the barrel. Um, and that leads me to leading of the barrel in these. Uh, people reload for Glocks and they'll say, don't shoot lead. You can shoot lead in them, but the big but is with polygonal rifling in the OEM barrel in the Glock, you will start to lead the barrel up and it's 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 kind of difficult depending with regular methods of cleaning to remove the lead from the barrel so if you're not doing that if you're not aware of that stuff don't shoot lead raw lead through the barrel if you're going to shoot uh, plated bullets like freedom munition here which i ordered and i shoot a ton of they use plated bullets these are 40s this is a plated bullet, plated 40 caliber. These still lead the barrel up a little bit. And so every once in a while, every three or 400 rounds, I run a regular federal, let's see if I have one close by, I will run a regular federal full metal jacket, copper, run a mag through like at the end of the match or you know after the match I'll burn a mag through the gun and that'll rip out the leaded barrel but if you get to the point where you've got so much lead and it's becoming a safety concern please you know do the do the the cleaning method where you use the chore boy uh, copper pads and, and a kind of a you know a, a rod of some sort and, and kind of scrape the lead out don't uh, you know, don't blow your gun up. You don't want to do that. Just be aware you need to, when you clean your pistol with the barrel, make sure you're getting the lead out. If it's building up, make sure to run some regular full metal jacket through it to burn that lead out or rip it out. Um, it's not a concern with your factory full metal jacket, but when you start running plated, it will become a concern. It is for me. So just every, you know, every once in a while, just check it out. Make sure you're, you're clean more or less or get it cleaned. If you're running just raw lead or, or powder or powder coated lead bullets or you know get it clean, do it right, inspect it, make sure you're actually getting the barrel clean. Um, it's something that will creep up on you and it is a concern for the Glock. Now if if you decide hey I just don't want to deal with the polygonal rifling aspect of it then you want you want to pursue a different barrel for your division um, KKM Precision makes an excellent uh, Glock barrel, match barrel in fact. Uh, so I, I got one of these. I don't shoot it yet. I don't use it yet. I uh, picked this up used for a reasonable price. But everything KKM makes, it, it seems to be really good quality. They have, everybody holds them in high regard. Uh, this is the Glock uh, 35 40 caliber barrel. And so eventually I might use it. But they use, the difference is and what's a little safer with lead over time is because it doesn't build up lead as like the polygonal rifling. This is your standard button rifling. If we can get that to come into focus. Anyways, so you've got your standard button rifling with this product. And like I said, they kind of they have a different feed ramp. It looks it, it's quality, it's a tighter chamber. Uh, some people say they're a little more accurate, so like I said, if you don't want to deal with the whole uh, running lead through the OEM barrel, get one of these. Uh, I think the you know they run about 180 bucks, give or take. Quality product, check them out. 
So we can get a close up there. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so the gun itself, um, if we were to list the basic first things, we already went over the sights. Uh, we we kind of touched on the trigger a little bit. Um, magazine release. Uh, I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of the metal magazine releases with the Glock, since they have polymer magazines and they're kind of susceptible to damage where the, the mag release lever engages with the magazine itself. So Ghost makes a extended mag release, which is bigger than the OEM extended mag release for the Gen 4. I found it to be just a little big. I was kind of releasing the mag when I was gripping it hard during competition, sometimes dropping the mag. So I kind of filed it down and reprofiled it with a jeweler's file. Or you can buy the little jeweler's file sets on the internet, pretty cheap. Um, it works pretty well. I like it. It's not small. I can kind of turn the gun, pop the mag out, get going. Okay, so talk about grip. I use just like your basic Home Depot grip tape. It's like step tape. It's like eight or nine bucks a roll. And there's there's enough to last you probably several seasons worth of shooting. And you can just kind of cut it to where you where you need it to be in limited. I get some up here, which you can't have in production, but it's great and limited to have. It's all about controlling the gun, keeping the gun stable in your hand when you're running it fast. You don't want that gun moving, you want to control. Bang, 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 bang. So there's that. It's not hard to put on. Just degrease the frame before you do it. Use a cotton swab or a napkin and some alcohol or acetone. Uh, you know, and then uh, stick it on, cut it. Make sure it's done right or it'll come off. Make sure you take your time, do it correctly. <laughs> As far as magwells go, I went with a, uh, I don't think you can see the label now, I got grip tape over it, but a Dawson Ice, I think it's Black Ice or Ice Magwell. It's for the Gen 4 with the medium backstrap. Nice thing with Dawson is they make every magwell specific for whatever backstrap on the Gen 4. So if you use the no back strap they make one if you use the medium to large they make the specific magazine well for that gun and they're they're super easy to install they have a weight um, kind of it's kind of a goes up into the back here and you screw it in his little set screw there which comes loose a lot even with Loctite so just be aware of that and you can see where you know kind of just kind of slide those in fast. They just go right in. Kind of give you an idea there. It works. They work. Definitely, definitely nice to have. Makes reloads a hair faster than production, or maybe a lot faster. It just depends who you are, I guess. Okay, so went through the magazine well. We went through the grip tape, the OC trigger, TTI sights. Uh, we'll get on to the internals of the gun. Okay, so I'm a big fan of Zev products. Um, they always make good stuff. It's you know it seems like their stuff's well thought out. Um, there's a lot of other stuff out there. that's probably you know in the same ballpark. But I I always like I always recommend people get their spring kit. That is probably one of the best upgrades for a Glock, especially Glock you shoot at a range or. You know, competition. Get that competition spring kit. It's going to come with you know, your lighter striker spring. It's going to come with a trigger spring that helps you pull the trigger, and it's going to come with a little safety plunger spring, which is reduced power, along with your striker spring, which is reduced. So these run ten bucks, twelve bucks on the internet, eBay usually. Uh, good, good money spent. But if you get one, buy another. Buy two of them. Uh, and the reason is sometimes you'll break a spring in competition and you need to have a backup so if you're going to get one set get two sets um, another great product I like from Zev is their uh, V4 race connector uh, there's a lot of people that make connectors out there so kind of experiment with who you want but 
I like Zeb's quality. It seems like they're, they're always, their products are finished well and they're always presented well. Their marketing is good. You know, this this is, looks like it's almost polished right out of the, right the get-go, brand new. And there's never like an issue. You don't have to bend anything. It's already made correctly to spec. And this will lighten up your... It gives you the feeling of lightening your trigger. It's got more of an angle on it. Anyways, pick that up too. That's what's in this gun. So, this is some of the parts I use. Competition spring kit from Zev. The Zev 4 uh, race connector. Move on to some other things. Okay, so we went over the trigger earlier and uh, how it was a set preset on the trigger kind of makes it a shorter take up when you're shooting fast. I want to go into the pull through of the trigger and after after you release after I'm sorry after you release the trigger striker you want the trigger to stop moving and what I mean by that is there's going to be a little bit of room here after the sear is released or after your striker is released you want the trigger to stop the reason is when you're pulling that trigger you're typically moving the gun so the faster you get that to stop that movement and the faster that trigger stops typically your shots gonna be a little more on 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 target and you get set up for the next shot so bang bang it's it's an important uh, it's an important thing and I'll show you what product offers that this one's from I love my Glock and it's an adjustable trigger stop and what it is it is a you see in the case here this is a stock ejector housing that they drill through and they put a set screw in and where the let's get this apart real quick here and the ejector housing you see a little screw back in there and when that cruciform comes down it stops it and that's how that works it's a real simple piece Probably one of the more simpler modifications to the Glock and it has a little tool there you can adjust a little Allen wrench you can adjust that trigger stop you don't want to adjust it to you want the cruciform to be able to still fall into that little valley so you don't want to get too greedy with your adjustment but uh, once you do adjust it, it it stops that trigger and typically what you'll see with this kind of product is your 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 speed your your uh, your splits as they call them, your speed shot to shot will, will you typically speed up a hair and also for me it made me a little more accurate so it's one of those products that you're buying a little bit of accuracy with your trigger pull with so like I said pick one of those up for your limited gun it's good stuff Okay, so the next subject I want to touch on is recoil springs. Um, this is one of those things that when I started shooting competitively, I thought, this makes no sense. You're going to tell me a lighter spring in the pistol makes it recoil less? It didn't, it didn't really compute with me. Um, I was kind of reluctant to, to try. I was kind of scared to try different recoil springs. Um, so earlier this year, maybe late last year, I went ahead and started with the uh, body Jaeger or Jagger products not sure how, how, how to say that it's a gen 4 captured recoil spring setup so it's actually a high quality piece the guy does really good work um, he said it's Jaeger products and this fits the gen 4 has a screw in front you lock tight it in torque it in there and this is like a full diameter uh, rod head it fits right in the well of that barrel and in limited and run a 15 spring which is generally considered like the standard Glock weight spring for limited 
So the 15 keeps the gun when it recoils, you know, recoils back and then it comes forward. It doesn't dip the gun too much, so it kind of keeps it level. Um, it seems to work. I, I, you know, of all things, especially in production, um, I use a 13, and you can also, if you want to go back and use in your Gen 4, you want to use an older rod, or for a third gen rather, I use a Zev as well. Um, this one, it's the same kind of spring, it's a 15. The weight is a little heavier, it's a stainless. Um, so you can kind of see it there, and then there's that little conversion piece for the Gen 4. Good product, that's from NDZ Performance. Buy a lot from those guys, springs, a lot of little parts for Glocks. These guys are good to deal with, always fast in shipping, so check them out. They sell a bunch on eBay, ndzperformance.com. Anyways, so when you're setting up those springs, um, I'm always a fan of lubrication. Make sure you're lubing your springs a little bit on the rods. Don't put everything in dry and then say, oh my gosh, I've had all this wear or, you know, the gun jammed because, you know, the, it's bone dry. It's like, this is grade school, grade school stuff, guys. Just lube the gun. They need grease in certain areas. They need a heavier oil. They need, uh, you know, a lighter spray oil in other cases in different areas of the gun. Um, it's just like your car. Some places, some parts on it get grease. Some parts are going to get oil. I know there's a lot of controversy on the internet over that kind of stuff, but just use your head. If it's a heavy impact area, it's probably going to need a grease. Or if it's it's an area that slides quite a bit, it's going to need a grease. If it's uh, if it's one of your lighter parts, you know, a general coating of oil will usually take care of that as well. So just use your head on it. The reduced weight recoil springs do work. Um, I know one local shooter actually uses a, uses a 11 pound on his 40. So I'm using 15. I'm kind of chicken. Maybe I'll maybe I'll switch to 13 eventually. Anyways, for now, 15 in my 40 limited gun runs good with the 165s, and I use a 13 in my production gun. So, and like I said, can't go wrong with the Jaeger setup. He offers some different things, or like the extended Zev, which is a cool product too. It's a little heavier than the Jaeger, and then you but you got to buy a little conversion piece for your Gen 4 but they're both uh, Izmi Springs. Jaeger actually makes one that uses the Wolf Spring as a heavier, di it's, a, it's a larger diameter, it's a heavier rod extended as well. So different different options out there, guys, just kind of showing you what what's out there. Uh, as far as cool factor goes, I think the look with the, the extended stainless rod is pretty cool. So uh, I was, you know, aesthetics are cool too. So I give that to Zev. As far as... Um, fit and finish and quality on this product. Jaeger is like second to none. They're, his stuff is really good. It's really precise and finished well. It's really hard too, so it's hardened. Um, anyhow, that's that on recoil springs. Okay, uh, we'll touch on some general things in limited. Um, the one thing definitely shooting production versus limited I've noticed um, when I started I was really afraid of shooting 40 uh, for some reason I thought you know I always hated the 40 I didn't uh, didn't really uh, have a you know a use for it it kind of it's like well you know 40 is for cops and for people who buy their first gun I really just didn't have uh, you know I, I kind of wondered like you know what's what purpose does 40 serve um, but I've, I've kind of grown to, to like shooting the round. It's uh, it's not as snappy, it seems, as like your 9mm typically is. Um, uh, the 40 caliber, it, it does have a little more recoil, like it's, but it's it, it's a little more, uh, maybe a soft, softer of a pulse than the 9. You can definitely tell you're shooting a larger round. But it's it's not uncontrollable. Uh, I think I can shoot both about the same speed, 40 and 9. So go, uh, going into that, going into differences between 40 and 9, obviously 34 versus, versus 35 is magazines. In limited, you are, you know, there's a, I think it's a 141.25 millimeter rule, which everybody calls like a 40, 140 millimeter rule. Um, so I typically use your your stock Glock 15 round magazine, and then 
I ended up going with some of these Terran Tactical extensions. Uh, they, Terran includes a uh, a longer spring. Um, it's a ISMI 10% plus spring that fits this whole magazine, so you're not you know you're not uh, running out of spring pressure on the way up. It doesn't jam. The only issues I've ran into with uh, these magazines is that some of the newer Gen 4 Glock mags sometimes don't like to feed. Um, they don't like uh, to feed all the rounds, so the follower would get locked up at the bottom. So I've kind of had to mix and match. I've even bought some older magazines to run and to kind of get everything going and not, not having a mag that will lock up on me. One thing I learned with this setup is that loading 20, I can get 20 in these magazines, but... They, sometimes the first shot will blow the magazine out. There's, almost, there's so much pressure in here that any little nudge on this or even none will just pop that mag right out. It's just There's too much tension. So I went back to loading 19 in a magazine. You can start a stage with 20 in the mag, then you know take the one off the top, you're back to 19 on the mag, and it, they seem to stay in pretty well. So I don't know what the issue is there. Maybe it's partially me, but they just don't seem to like to stay in the 20 loaded in them. So 19 it is. I don't really have a problem changing magazines anyways. Uh, anyways, that was one of the issues I ran into. So be aware of that. Um, test your magazines as well. If if you're going to get them loaded up before a match, you know, before you, if, if you clean them and put them back together, load them up one time to 19 and make sure that they feed all 19. You know, you know, you can drain the mag in your hand or whatever you want to do but uh, obviously do it safely but make sure the gun the, the magazine will still feed whatever number you're used to putting in there uh, because like I said you're modifying everything at this point and you don't want it to fail out of match or get locked up and then you're sitting there trying to fix mags on the fly you know before your stage starts and you should be focusing on stage planning so there's that on magazines they work well can't complain uh, once once you figure out the small issues. But uh, once again, a quality product from uh, Taren at Taren Tactical. So I get that to focus. There we go. Yeah, they're cool looking too. So that's that on magazines. All right, I wanted to touch base a little bit on uh, I guess this is more of a dry practice or dry firing aspect of the competition sport a lot of people talk about hey you need to be uh, dry practicing you need to be uh, you know running stuff at home with the small targets you know so basically you're gonna need a couple things um, I cut out my own little targets. I know it's kind of funny at first, but uh, they seem to be working. Um, you can, you know, the sky's the limit on sizes. Uh, you could, some people cut out poppers, that kind of stuff. But you're going to need, when you dry practice, you're going to need these tipped in snap caps. Um, you know, over the years of shooting, I always kind of seen them. I said, well, what, you know, why do, why would anybody need these? Um, well, apparently I figured out why. Um, especially if you're going to run like an aftermarket striker, or you're going to dry fire for a long time. And you're going to need these. There's a little brass piece. The primer is a little brass spring-loaded piece. So when your striker hits that, it's not hitting, uh, you know, the face, or rather the rear of the breech face of your pistol and beating it up. This is going to absorb that shock of the striker and it's brass so it's a little softer than the steel of the striker itself. Another selling point of these uh, snap caps is when you go to reload a pistol if you're dry practicing, you're practicing your you know your reloads where you're inserting your magazine you need these rounds in there to actually you know it kind of gives the magazine a rounded top or rounded edge to actually simulate actual loading you don't want to 
you know, you're not going to be at a match. You're not going to be reloading with an empty magazine. At least we hope not. But sometimes you get it caught there. So you want to have that simulated round, just like you're doing it for real. So it's a good product. Um, I haven't had any trouble with them. Uh, but I do advise buying two sets. So they're kind of expensive. I think they're about two bucks a pop. Uh, I'd advise buying two sets. I think five come in a set. And they're available about anywhere that shoots, uh, sells a lot of shooting supply or the internet, of course. You know, you don't have to leave the house, which is great. Um, as far as setting up small miniature targets, you can set up bigger ones, you know, wherever you want. You can make penalty targets. You can, you know, all that kind of stuff. And anything you do to practice that your gun handling or your your magazine changes or movement or, or, or you know, anything, get that gun in your hands once or twice a week, if not more. Spend some quality time, whether it be drawing the pistol, draw, shoot, reload, um, you know, transition to targets that are distant and close. Any of that stuff is going to pay off, uh, you know, when it comes to performance.